Hi, and welcome to another virtual session of Drop-In Drawing, where we bring the museum to you with a series of drawing and art making exercises meant to challenge and grow your creative skills. My name is Darcy and I'm an educator who manages family and teen programs at the Met. I'm also a maker and an artist on my free time. Today, we will focus on creating a collage, which is a way to make art using paper. And for inspiration, we'll focus on the back side of this easy chair from our American Wing collection. This chair is almost 47 inches tall and almost 33 inches wide. It's attributed to Caleb Gardner, who, who created the wooden frame for this piece, as well as signed it. But it's likely that the upholstery that we're looking at was created by a young girl in a female academy in the 1750s. She likely made this as a gift for her parents or a loved one. She also would have used needlepoint to create this scene, which is a technique that utilizes thread and needle to carefully embroider on a piece of linen. For our personal work of art, we're going to focus on the back side of this piece where you can see depicted a pastoral scene with soft rolling hills, animals running through the fields, punctuated with trees and flowers throughout. The hills and fields stretch horizontally across the back of the chair, accounting for about two thirds of the composition. They're represented with a lot of greens and beige or brown colors with a little bit of blue for, the, for a pond. The colors create uneven organic lines that are made to mimic nature. Starting at the bottom left of the piece, you can see there are some white birds in the blues of the pond. The shapes of the birds are all very similar. They're all in silhouette and they're all facing the left side of the chair. They're not situated to create a repeated pattern. And in all, I was able to count about 12 full body birds and four heads of birds that are peeking out from the water. As your gaze moves up towards the sky, there are other plants, vegetation, and animals found throughout this piece, including a shepherd dressed in all blue with 14 sheep on the right side of this chair. I'll try to describe more details like this throughout the art making demonstration. But for now, you may notice that there are three trees also growing from the middle of the landscape. The one on the right is the tallest with green leaves attached to its branches. There are two other smaller trees with the smallest situated in the middle of the landscape. These trees also have green leaves that are attached to its branches, but it also has yellow and red flower or fruit like forms growing from their branches as well. Four deer also are running in front of the trees from the right side of the image to the left, with the two on the right being white with black spots and the two on the left being a more brownish orange color. And finally, on the top of the picture, which takes up about a third of the composition, you'll notice the sky, which is a light beige color with some pink swirls to indicate either clouds or the wind. And in the sky, you'll notice four brown, pink, and yellow birds flying around, as well as a yellow sun that if you look very closely, has two eyes, a nose, and a mouth on the top left. What I love most about this piece is that the more that I look at it, the more that I notice little details about it that I didn't notice before. From the little strawberries on the bottom right, to the extra bird that's in the largest tree. There are lots of details, surprises, as well as fun repetitive shapes used to create this work of art. Although we've used a drawing instrument in the past for drop and drawing, this week we're gonna play with layering paper to recreate this landscape into our own collage. Collages are really fun ways to create works of art without the use of a drawing instrument when we're in the galleries of the museum, we normally don't have an opportunity to create collages because some of the materials that we'll use today are not safe for works of art in the galleries. But for this week, since we're working from home, we have way more flexibility in terms of what materials we can use. 
So with that being said, let's start the demonstration so you can make your own collage at home with materials that you have. Okay, so once you're ready, you might you may need a couple minutes to sort of look around your house to see what you have in order to create collages. The first thing you'll definitely need for collaging is some something to stick the paper together. So you could either use tape or glue. I'm using a glue stick, but you could use white glue as well. Um, and tape, if you have some tape, either one works fine. I have some, this is called washi tape. It has patterns on it. I'll use it more as a collage material, but washi tape is also a great option. Um, it's a little less stickier than this tape, but it's still something that you can use. If you have a scissor, great. If you don't, it's not a big deal. I will be using a scissor mostly, but I'll also show you a, a technique that um, utilizes just ripping the paper. And then you'll need lots of options for paper. And so I went around my house, I found some magazines and some catalogs that I might want to use as collage material. When I think about collage material, I like to think about the colors that I see, whether it's very um, like no texture and just the full color in certain sections. Um, this is a nice yellow that I really like, but I could also imagine using these, these peaches. Um, I like this since, since, uh, since there's so much green in this uh, work of art that we're working from, I also pulled some materials that are green. So this is a wreath that was from a catalog and this has a nice texture to it. Another option is that you could just find some junk mail in your home that has some colors that you're interested in. So this was a nice red. I actually really like the pattern on this too. It's something I could see myself using. Wrapping paper or tissue paper is also a great option. This is tissue paper. Um, many of us are getting brown bags from the store. So brown, there are lots of brown in, in this work of art. So maybe brown paper is great. And other, another option would be to just take a plain piece of paper, either printer paper or uh, loose leaf paper. And if you have some paint at home, you could always just take a brush and paint the full page. When I do that, I don't mind that there's some thicker parts where the where the paint was really thick or thinner parts where it was much more watered down. Or you can take a plain piece of paper and if you have a crayon, just fill the whole page with your crayon. Once you fill the whole page and you can use that as well as, as some um, collage material. Next, I'll show you when you're creating um, collages, there are a few techniques for cutting. So one thing you can do, and when you look at this work of art, we'll focus first on the largest shapes we see on this composition. And so one thing that I'm noticing when I'm looking at it is that there's, um, there are hills, there are fields, there's some water, the sky at the top, um, when I look at this piece, I know that I want to work from the sky and then build the hills, the fields, all the way down to the bottom of the page. And so one way, one thing you can do is you can take your scissor and just cut. And when I look at these hills and, and these fields, I notice that they're uneven lines. They're, they don't, they're horizontal and they're not straight. And so sometimes, as you can see, I've already cut this. Um, sometimes you may want to start a little lower build your hill up a little, dip back down, um, and then maybe I want to come back up, right? So there, there's that option of cutting that way. Or you can take paper and you can rip it. So this one I actually ripped. This is the other side of the rip. But this is this gives you less control over how high the hill comes or how low you want to dip it. But it is a really fun way and it gives you some texture because you have the color and then you have the weight. And so you would just rip it across. Um, and sometimes I just like to use, I like to use this in my collaging when I'm working. So now that I've shown you two different techniques for cutting paper, I've already pre-cut some paper for the background. I did it because my cutting technique can take a while. Um, and because I'm, when I look at this piece, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I see a lot of rows, right? So I counted about six or seven right there. You may count more if you want to layer more paper, but you just want to start. I always want to start at the top uh, where the sky is. I'm using a gold painted paper for the sky. 
And then I want to just take the paper, I may even use this piece of paper that I just cut, but I just want to start laying it out. I want to lay out my composition. I want to try to feel out where the shapes are, um, where I want the hills to be. So I start with the sky, then I go to a little bit of the green. I see a green field. I see like a brown, uh, tannish hill on the left side. And so I'm gonna, this is actually our brown paper bag. Um, I wanted to, I wanted the next brownish hill or tannish hill to be a different color than the larger one that's on, that's on the left. So the one on the right is more of a yellow color. And as you can see, I'm just layering the paper. I'm just, I'm not gluing, I'm not, I'm not taping yet. I'm just laying the paper out because I want to make sure that I have enough paper for the background. And so this hill I made really wavy, but it didn't seem like enough when I was laying it down. So I took another sheet of paper that was green. This one I ripped, this one I cut. And so I'm just going to use these to um, create the next layer of green on here. And then I see a pond. Great. So I have my blue. I also had a nice blue that was like a shirt that you could have used that it was from a magazine but I'm actually using one of the painted pieces of paper that I that I painted and then I, at the bottom I see like it's much lighter than this brown that I have here but it's more of like a yellowy tanny color um, but as I'm laying, laying this out I notice oh there's some white still here I still see that white so how can I um, fill it up. How can I fill up the back so that you don't see any white? So maybe I need to adjust this. So maybe I'll move the pond down. I'll angle this green paper a little bit. Um, I'll lower this hill. I still see some white. So another option is you may want to fill in these white areas with smaller pieces of paper. Um, so maybe I'll take a sheet from earlier just rip it off and stick it behind here. So now I filled that up. I really like how that looks. And when I'm ready to start laying things down, I'm gonna start from the back sky again. I'm gonna start from back here. And sometimes what I do is I flip my paper over. I'll take my glue stick and put some glue on the edges. And then I'll just stick this down. And as you can see, I'm shifting the papers I just laid out because I know that they'll fit. In my mind, I'm like, I know they'll fit. And if they don't, then I'll add, like I did um, in the screen section, I'll just add more, um, more paper. If you're just going to tape, you just want to take, you can take as much tape as you want. You can take a lot of tape, a little bit of tape. The benefit of tape is that you can actually put, you can tape two pieces at the same time. Actually, this, this tapes three pieces. So our green, our brown bag, and our sky, our gold sky. And so I just wanna make sure that the whole composition is filled. Um, and, and my gluing and taping takes a while. So I pre-glued some to my base to show you what it looks like. So this is, um, this is a finished background that I'm gonna use to show you our next technique. So if you need to pause the video before you move on and I show you how to recreate some of the animals you see on here, go ahead and pause. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep going. So if you look on the bottom left-hand side, as I described earlier, there are some birds in the water. And then in the middle um, where I have this yellow tan color, there's some sheep with a shepherd. There's also four deer that run across in the middle of this composition. Um, and then there's some birds in the sky. And so one technique for cutting, because so many of these animals actually look, the shapes are very similar. So what I did was I took a piece of paper, it's a little smaller than our larger ones. I actually drew the shape of a bird on here. I'm gonna make it a little darker. So I drew a general shape of a bird. And I just, I just looked at what I was looking at in on the chair and just sort of made that shape myself. And then what I'll do so I can cut a bunch of these out, one technique would be to fold the paper a few times like an accordion. So I just did that two times. 
and take your scissor and cut it out, cut this shape out. And what ends up happening, um, I'm not gonna show you the, well, maybe I'll show you the whole cut. I'm just gonna cut it out. What ends up happening is that you end up with the same bird shapes that you can use to glue on your piece. And again, it's not in a repeated pattern, but you might wanna put it in a repeated pattern, but all these, all these birds were cut from the same sheet of paper after I folded it and cut it cut it out so I did the same thing for the sheep so again these are so small um, harder cut you know experiment see what feels right to you you may want to make them the same size as the birds that's fine and then um, these birds that are on the top I actually used uh, three different color papers and I just layered them instead of folding the paper and I cut um, the birds out so you can lay them out however you want on your page. I really like that configuration. Um, as you can see in, in the next um, sheet, that's how I sort of glued them on. So again, you may wanna pause now to work on cutting these animals out. It's a technique you can use, or if you wanna individually cut them out, go ahead and do that. So after you've glued them all down, when you're looking at this piece, there are a lot of flowers, there's some fruit-like forms, so I'll show you a technique for doing that. So on the bottom right-hand side, there is this green patch where there's a lighter color vine and what I think are strawberries. And so what I did was, um, I actually pre-cut these two because they're so small and it, it's, um, it's difficult sometimes to see, but I pre-cut some vines and some leaves that I'm gonna layer there. And one way to do that is, I, this is a piece of magazine, and I just like to make really thin slivers with my scissor to create that vine shape. So flip it. And then I, I cut out strawberries. They're suggested shapes of strawberries, they're not exact. So I just took some red and I cut them out of some red. And that's one way, you could just, I cut each individual shape. And so um, one way to cut, you see this piece of paper, I've already cut a bunch out, but I like to use the edge of the paper. Um, Cause for some, when I look at these strawberries, it seems to be a flat side. So then you can, you can either, um, suggest the shape of a strawberry or just cut out circles however you think a strawberry looks is is right it's fine you can just cut those shapes out the other thing to the left of these strawberries are some flowers and so i wanted to be able to show you how to make flowers out of washi tape and so after you've cut out um some of these stems and this one might be too too tall so look i can cut it with my fingers rip it with my fingers and stick it there and I would have glued that before doing this, but this washi tape already has a flower print on it. And so what you could do is you could actually just cut the flower shapes out. And it's sticky, so be careful. It's not too sticky, it's not like our glue, but it is sticky. And you can just stick it on and there, you've made a flower. The other thing you can do, this, this washi tape is pink um, and sometimes I like to just build my own flower petals out of washi tape and so you can just rip the washi tape and suggest petals and I'm sort of ripping with my fingers um, shapes that look like flower petals to me and then you can just stick them on and there's your flower um, that's a technique you can also use when we get to the trees, and I'll show you. I'll show you some examples of that as well. Once we get that, once you get that far, your um, composition may look like this. So as you can see, I have my my background, my animals. I even suggested the shape of the shepherd that I see on this right hand side. And so when you're ready to make trees, I've actually already cut some trees out, but the tree on the right-hand side is much larger than the middle tree and the, um, and the tree all the way on the left. 
And so you would just cut these shapes out of a brown that you like, if it's brown, if that's the color that you want to make your trees. This is our brown bag that I pulled from earlier. And this tree on the right hand side, and actually all the trees are sort of curved and then they have these three branches. So one way to do it is you just cut a curve out. And now I'm cutting the branches. They look like fingers to me when I start cutting that way. And so maybe the, the branch on the left has a curve as well to suggest the look of a branch. And there's our third tree and you can I actually didn't glue everything down perfectly um, sometimes you can go back in and glue and so there are trees and then one way to make our leaves would be to take something that has leaves already in the picture and you can cut out circles and just stick it on so um, this creates our leaves right? So I like these circular shapes for the tree. But our other option would be to use some of the technique that we used for the strawberries, or you can even use our washi tape that, that we used earlier to sort of stick onto the, the tree to make them look full with uh, flowers and fruit and things like that. And finally, um, there are deer that run from the right side to the left side. And so two techniques for that. Again, you can do the same thing you did for the birds in the pond and the sheep. And so as you can see, I did that with this white, this white deer and this white deer. They were just two sheets of paper that I did the accordion style file, uh, fold for and then just cut them out. You could layer the paper like we did for the birds earlier um, because these deer, the deer on the right hand side have black spots. I actually took an article and cut the deer shape out of the words that I saw to suggest those, um, those, polka, those dots that I see on the deer. Um, I actually really like how that deer looks so I may take this white deer out and leave that one there. And then another option for animals that we haven't discussed is if you're looking through your magazines and you see similar animals, and these are all woolly mammoths, so they're not deer, but they're three of the same. And so one technique would be to just cut these out and put them on our page, or you can take another piece of paper, like the white that we have here, and you can use these shapes as stencils and just cut these shapes out of the white and then just stick them on. I know it would change the type of animal that you have on your on your work, but you can play around with shapes and animals and, and make it your own. That's sort of the fun part. And for the last thing you want to do, make sure you don't forget the sun on the top left. The sun is actually my favorite part. And like I said earlier, it has two eyes and nose and a mouth and uh, you may want to use a drawing utensil to just draw in the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. I like a smiling sun. Um, you could do the same for the deer so that they're not just blank faces. And you can erase away if you make a mistake. You can use a marker for, sometimes um, pencil doesn't actually show up on magazine paper so you may want to use a marker for that and that's it you I would just suggest having fun with it think about what colors you want to use what techniques you want to use to recreate this work of art um, and so let's recap we actually just we gathered materials we have at home and prepared them by either painting drawing or looking through magazines to find colors and textures that we wanted for our collage and then we cut right we either used our scissor to cut or we uh, actually just ripped the paper to create our, our background first and then we started adding in the details by cutting ripping or creating repeated shapes by drawing animals that we then cut out um, and so we just kept using the material the paper and so we would first cut, lay it out, and then stick it on the paper. 
Thank you for jo joining me today for Drop and Drawing. Uh, if you want to share out your works of art, which I really hope you do, please don't forget to tag us on social media and include the hashtag MetSketch.